Scientists and engineers use locations on Earth to simulate various aspects of Mars. One example is Devon Island in the Canadian High Arctic, which looks a lot like Mars. But it's missing one key feature that would complete the illusion. On this episode of Mars Guy. In the past week, Perseverance completed two drives totaling about 53 meters to reach a rocky knob on the lower rim of Jezero Crater. Here's Mars Guy for scale. From here, there's a good view of a field of dunes that I've been looking at since Perseverance crested the rim. They're especially intriguing when viewed from above, in this case with the orbiting camera known as High Rise. Mars is truly the dune planet, and they come in all shapes and sizes. But most of them technically are not dunes. They're granular ripples made of sand and larger particles, but still formed by wind. We know this because rovers have been messing with them since the Spirit rover in Gusev Crater intentionally scuffed one back in March of 2004. This bit of interplanetary vandalism revealed a couple of important details. First, Martian granule ripples are usually dark inside. That's because they're made of basaltic sand rather than quartz sand, which is typical on Earth. It's a covering of dust that makes them look light on the outside. Second, there's a layer of coarser grains that armors the ripple. This forms after wind winnows away the finer sand grains, leaving behind a lag of grains too big to be easily moved by wind. The Opportunity rover traversed a parking lot flat plain covered in granule ripples, easily driving over them until one day, or saw, it didn't thanks to a slightly larger ripple that stopped Opportunity in its tracks. After weeks of efforts, first at the Jet Propulsion Lab on Earth and then on Mars, it managed to get unstuck and live another SOL. Actually, 4,624 more SOLs, to be exact. The work in the sandbox at JPL is an example of how scientists and engineers can simulate conditions on Mars to help provide information for a range of issues or questions. That's what's behind the site on Devon Island. There's a 39 million year old, barely recognizable impact crater there that scientists can study to better understand impact processes on Mars. Houghton Crater and the Mars-like landscapes around it are what inspired the Houghton Mars Project, a base originally funded by the U.S. National Research Council and NASA Ames Research Center, starting in 1996. Since then, it's grown to what is now the world's largest privately operated polar research station. NASA has funded various projects at this research station, including a couple of different rovers that can test new technologies for possible use on Mars rovers. But something that can't be investigated with rovers here are aeolian bedforms, aka dunes, ripples, and sand drifts. Devon Island just doesn't have them. They don't appear in views on the ground or from orbit, so this most common of features on Mars, visible at every landing site ever visited, is not visible in images from Devon Island. It just doesn't have the right conditions to form them. Obviously, there are locations on Earth where sand dunes form, but granule ripples are relatively rare. Even more rare are ones composed of basaltic sand. So if you know of a place with ripples like these that's not Mars, please share this information with the world. 